I felt like I wasn't on an island. I met my people mm. and I felt supported in that framework and the accountability that I had to show up every single week. I had to show up for the calls. If I wanted to get out of it, I had to put into it. And that was a game changer. Welcome to the Agency Hour podcast, where we help web design and digital agency owners create abundance for themselves, their teams, and their communities. This week, we're joined by Jen Sikowski, a coach here at Agency Mavericks, and also the founder and CEO of Rainy Day Designs. Jen is a dynamic speaker and an inspiration to everyone who comes in contact with her. In this episode, we explore Jen's journey as an agency owner, setting goals, overcoming anxiety and overwhelm, knowing your why, and nailing down your daily disciplines. We also talk about how to train yourself to look at things differently so you can get a different outcome. And we talk about leading a team with transparency and getting everyone on board, even if there is some reluctance. And if you've already fallen off your goals, we tell you how to get back on track and make them happen. All that and much more. I'm Johnny Flash, stay with us. Hey, Jen, how's it going? Hey, Johnny, doing well, how are you? I'm doing great. It's so great to have you on here. I'm so excited about this. Um, so, hey, since you've been in Mavericks, uh, first as a student and now as a coach, and you've been in the ecosystem for a long time, I thought maybe you could just share a little bit about like how it was before Mavericks, how it was after you've been through Mavericks, and, and now obviously uh, how it is. Sounds good. Well, thank you for having me back on the podcast. I love being here and I love working with our agency owners through the Mavericks program. Um, man, thinking back before Mavericks, that's before children, before like team she member. And, and that's the reference point, right? With kids. It's yeah. like, is that before kids? At what age? Well, back then I stumbled upon Troiding. It was WP Elevation back then. It was the blueprint. So anybody who's mm -hmm. been around the block knows what I'm talking about. And I knew I needed the framework. I, I don't think I was pregnant, but I was knew I was growing a family, but then I got pregnant and I was like, I do not want to be the smartest person in the room. Like, I know that I got to figure this out. And, and at that time I was taking on any project. I moved my business 350 miles away from where I started it. I knew no one. Mm -hmm. I was self-taught WordPress, self-taught Adobe. Like I just mm -hmm. was, I'll take anything. $250 for a website. Let's go. I'll figure it out. <laughs> like that's where I started. And I yeah, remember yeah. back then I, so I went through the program and I was in it about a year and that's when the Mavericks rolled out the mastermind part of it. And by that time it was one or two years in, I forget. And I had implemented the blueprint. So that was helping me, but the structure. So before I had a few systems in place, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't concrete and it wasn't consistent. And I was ambitious enough. You know, I had goals then, but they were safe goals. And mm -hmm. I went into the Mavericks program. And from that point, it was, there was a shift in me. There was this confidence shift in me. It was really, I can do the work. I could build out the systems. I knew like I was, I felt good about that, but it was the mindset behind the Mavericks program. That was the biggest impact for me. Because when I remember going to that first meetup, I I was just, I don't want to say I was scared because that's not in me to be scared, but I was more reserved. Intimidated or reserved? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like, let's use the word reserved. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. And didn't feel like I belonged. It was imposter syndrome for sure. Mm -hmm. Other agency owners here, because right before I had stepped into that program, pretty sure I didn't meet the like actual criteria that it is now, <laughs> but I had set a big six figure goal then. Mm -hmm. And I had set that way back then. And I was planned. I wrote it out every day. I, I kept pushing that forward and it took a while. So when I went through that Mavericks program, once again, mindset shift, it was about that. I belonged in this room. Like I, mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't on an Island. I met my people. And I felt supported in that framework and the accountability that I had to show up every single week. I had to show up for the calls. If I wanted to get out of it, I had to put into it. And that was a game changer. So mm. after a year, I went through the program and I, and I had some family, like kiddo stuff that I was trying to navigate and raising babies and business. And I started hiring. I took a step back. And when I left the Mavericks, I took all of that framework, I took all of that mindset juice, and I implemented it. 
And I feel like I was, I was consistent over the years. Um, I hit that big six figure goal. I continued to grow and really focus on once again, for me, it was mindset. I had to continue to get out of my own way because like I said, I'm an ambitious person. If I set out to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. But but I think the value that the biggest was I was having to not necessarily measure up, but there was a little bit of competition, right? Because that's where I met you. And you were like three steps ahead of me always. And I But you were like an OG. I remember I remember you're like one of the OGs in Mavericks, you know, like kind of the first like uh group to go through. And then I was coming in and um, it seemed like everybody else already knew what was going on. And I was like, just trying to figure it out. But I'd been following Troy for a long time, just like you. But it was like, oh, man, you know, all this, all these different things. And and um, I think there is like a good, healthy, I mean, it's a very sharing community, but there is like, a, oh, man, if someone else can do this, like I can do this, or I can do it like, you know, 2x or whatever, right? There's, so there is that, like, uh, for me, who's competitive, also, it's like, there is that. Um, and I think it's also just to your credit. I mean, I think, you know, raising two small kids, trying to run an agency, like do all those things, like that's a lot, you know, that's a lot. Like um, Julie works, as you know, in the business with me. Um, and so I know like definitely when, when our kids are small, like that takes a lot of time and energy. And when she, I'll never forget, she went on a mission trip. Our youngest was one year old. So we had like seven-year-old, five-year-old, three-year-old, one-year-old. She went on a mission trip for 10 days out of the country. And I had like the four kids um, and I was just like, oh my goodness, this is harder than like anything that I do, like to take care of them, the energy, the food, like all the different things, like wake up in the middle of the night, you know, and it was just like, I think it was, it was good for our marriage because then it was like a little bit more appreciation for all the stuff that she does. So I can only imagine doing all that and then running the business and pushing that forward. Like it's a lot, you know, yeah. so hats off to you on that. Thank you. Yeah. I always said, I I run a full-time business on a part-time schedule mm-hmm. because we were fortunate. We had, while well, my husband was traveling off and on for his work, um, I had my in-laws helped. So I at least had those two days a week that I was mm-hmm. able to dig in. And I am a very structured person anyways. So, I mean, that's why with the Mavericks, like it's all about processes and systems. I, that fed me. Like I mm-hmm. fell into that and I embraced it with everything. So yeah, I agree. And I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. You don't no, you don't awesome. realize it until you're having to do it full time. So yeah, kudos to you. You survived. A lot. I survived. Yeah. We did have a few nail polish incidents where I was like, how do I get this off the white tile grout? Like, I don't know what to do. Um, then I learned there's a thing called nail polish remover. Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> so um, so so fast forward all the way to now. What what are your plans for the future? Like, what are your goals? I, I know you're very like driven and stuff. And and I know uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, because you just did an amazing job at MavCon talking about goal setting and planning and all of that. Like, well, what, what's, what's next? What's next? Well, because of those goals, goal planning, I have to tell a quick story to mm-hmm. feed into that because how I came back to it. I mean, I was invited. You, you asked and I, I was humbled by um, coming back into the Mavericks as a coach. But even before that, that was last year around springtime, I think that we talked. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was 2023, December of 2022, I had mapped out. And the thing that I brought to MavCon is just how to set up your goals. Oftentimes we look at a one to three year mark of where we want to be. And I like to embrace that, this discomfort of going beyond that. Like, who am I going to be in 10 years? Because you and I, we both have an affinity for books. Um, and if you ever read, I'm going to name drop 10X, please get it, mm-hmm. read it if you're mm-hmm. listening to this right now. But if you stretch yourself, even if you don't hit that big 10X, that big scary goal, wherever you land is going to be eons further to where you are right now. Yeah. And yeah. I truly embrace that mindset. Even before reading that, I embrace that mindset. So I went back and through the Mavericks, there's this thing called uh, Destination Happy Place. And it's where you write out, who do you want to be? Well, I like to journal that out even further of like, I start with my kids. Where are they at? What is my husband doing? Where do I see myself as? What does my my day looks like? How I enter the week? And I'm very detailed on what feels right. And I don't hold anything back. And it's just me between me and the paper and the pencil. And mm-hmm. um, I map that out. And the cool thing of it was, 
is before I came back to Mavericks, I have a love of helping people and building other people up. It just feeds my soul to help coach and love on other people. So I had put down that I wanted to coach. I, I wanted to do more coaching. And I had some goals written out about that for 10 years. I so, promise I wasn't reading your email. <laughs> yeah, I'd tap in on something. But and it and it's just amazing because when we start to set ourselves up, but then we act like we want to be that person now, it shortens that time frame. I don't know what happens. Y'all know I love Jesus. Like I don't know what happens with that, but it happens much quicker. And mm -hmm. so it's cool because I wrote that down and then the opportunity came back and I was excited. But with coming back, I wanted to put myself through the, the framework again, right? So between continue to build my business and working myself outside, out of the business, I want to be completely, I want to be a true founder of my company. I have an amazing culture, um, established, amazing team in place. They are wonderful human beings. And so my goal is that they don't need me. So fast forward, um, I'm putting myself back through the Mavericks program because obviously in the last, what, five years or how many ever years that I've been away from it, there has been a lot of developments and technology has changed, how we go about things, how we sell has changed. So that's part of it. Right now, short term, I've been putting myself back through it so I can help speak the language. Long term is, like I said, I want to be doing more of this. I want to be doing more outside of the agency but loving on my team and helping other people. Love it. Love it. It's huge. It's huge. It's awesome. And I think I like, I appreciate that. It's like, um, you're not just thinking about it with like your business. You're thinking about it with like your family and your, you know, other, because I think sometimes we just compartmentalize our life, right? We're just like, oh, I've got all these goals for the business, but like, I don't have the goals for myself or for my family or for other parts of our life, you know? And I think it's just, I think we all need to be thinking a little bit broader and longer range, you know? And I think what you said about like acting, acting like it's now, even if you haven't got there yet, sets you up to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I just, you're, you're always so inspirational in terms of like, just taking life by the horns and just like, you know, wrestling it to the ground, um, like regardless. I just, I just love that. I appreciate that. I, so, I oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I truly believe that as agency owners, we forget we're a whole person, mm -hmm. right? We think that because we're so consumed and depending on where you're at in your business journey, you're either like taking up every project that you can, trying to figure it out. You know, you got to hire, you're fighting burnout. You're probably more turned into your business than you are at the home front. And that's what like, I like to challenge people who we work with agency owners is because if we, if what happens when we have this great business, but we have no loving home or our kids, we don't know them anymore, or it has to be more than just business. It has to be more than just finances. And so when we put on that, well, and I would call it the whole agency owner, there are lots of different buckets because we're more than just the business. So as we, especially going into a new year, it's critical to start to break down on not just what you want to be with the business, but who do you want to show up as, as a person? Because how we are outside of office, it pours into who we are inside of the office. I love it. I love it. I think, you know, one of the things is that as we think about the agency owners who are, are inevitably going to be listening to this, you know, I think we all struggle with things. Um, you know, it could be imposter syndrome, like you mentioned earlier, it could be anxiety. It could be uh, letting go of things and having the team like run with them. Right. And just not doing all the things, feeling like we have to do all the things. Um, it could be family drama. It could be so many things, right? How do you, um, what, what would you say to like that agency owner that's maybe struggling with something to like, I'm just trying to like keep my head above water. I can't really like make a goal. I can't, you know, it, it feels like then I'm just adding more pressure onto myself. It makes me more anxious, right? Or whatever. Like, how would you, what would you, how would you encourage them? I'd have to start with why. Why are you doing this? Why did you show up and turn on your computer today? Why did you have that meeting? Why did you start your agency? If you have a strong why, that will help you push through when it's hard. Our, our strong why helps us realign when things get rough because it's not just 
I need to make this money. It's because I want to leave a legacy for my family. I want to support, I want to retire my husband. I want to pour back into my community. It has to be bigger than financial, just like we had mentioned before, but I would start there. What is your why? And then look at yourself. Have you, have you taken care of yourself recently? Because I find we, and I'm this person, I'm the one that is the more time that I can push through this, the more time that I can be in this office, the more I'll get done. It's not the case. That's when we fight burnout. We have to take care of ourselves. We have, we, what's the, um, we all hear it. You can't pour from an empty cup. I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. I truly mm -hmm. believe that you have to pour in. So what that goodness, it'll spill out your home and your business. So is it, are you getting enough sleep? Are you scheduling out your day? Are you building out the routines to help you show up as your best self? And even like playing the, uh, there's an exercise I love to do is, so when we do that whole mapping out the 10 years and all and who we want to be, well, how do we set ourselves up to be the best version of ourselves? I know for me, it comes down to my daily disciplines. It are the things that are my non-negotiables. And when stuff gets off and I start to fight burnout and like right now there's been some things happening and it's been hard. I go right back to those daily devotions and I go mm. right back to moving my body and I go right back to doing my reading and prioritizing sleep and making sure I'm getting enough water. So that's, that's the two main things that I would start with is know your why and take care mm. of yourself, whatever that may be in your home life or your world, just decide that and then make it a non-negotiable mm. mm. and then find accountability right? When we, we often think that because of what we do, literally we're on a technical island by ourselves with our computers. You have to find your people. You have to have that accountability. So if you don't feel like if you don't have a team or maybe you're leading and there's just stuff going on that you can't talk to your team about, right, right. get, get in the math Mavericks program. I'm going to name drop that right now. Get your people because those are the people that are going to be able to pull you out when you're feeling stuck or when you need to have that sounding board. I know over the last years, because I haven't been in this program, I've still been able to connect with you and other OGs to when I just like, I'm about ready to, <laughs> you want my business? <laughs> no. Like it gets so hard. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that you lean on. So mm -hmm. I, I really, I mean, I could keep going, but those probably would be top three. No. And I think you, you bring up, a, you bring up good points about like, I think we underestimate, like, especially, you know, most people are working from home or they're working in the office nearby or whatever. And like, we underestimate like getting out and moving our body and getting exercise, whether even if it's just a walk or whatever. Right. And, um, listening to books or audio or podcasts or, or things like that. Um, at least the audience here is, is, is listening to a podcast, right? They're, they're here with us. But I, I think all of those types of things, it's like, we underestimate, we think if I could just work a few more hours in the day, that's going to solve everything. You know, if I get, a, if I stay a little bit longer, if I get a few more things on my to-do list done, like that's going to solve it when like, probably actually the best thing you could do would be like, turn off the computer, leave the office, go for a walk, like have dinner with your family or your friends or whoever, like get away from the house um, and just like live a little, you know, and then everything else is going to be a little bit easier. And I, I, I say this often too. It's like, it's kind of like planning for a, a, a trip, right? You're about to go like my, my son's leaving for Disney tomorrow with his course, you know, group that the school's going there and he gets to go there. He hasn't packed anything yet. Like he, his, he, I mean, he has to be at the airport like so early tomorrow. He hasn't packed anything, but like he's going to get it all packed and he's going to be ready to go, even though there's like this much time. Right. And he could have started packing like a week or two ago, but like it would have just been. So I think, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is like when we're forced into getting stuff done in a limited amount of time, like you working you know, part-time as an agency owner and getting it all done, like it forces you to just get it done in less time, prioritize what thing you're going to actually spend the time on forces you to hand stuff off. Cause if you suddenly had to run your business in five hours a week, you would somehow figure out how to pass off yep. the other 40 hours that you've been doing or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think like, sometimes we just were our own biggest obstacle, right. In mm -hmm. terms of like self-sabotage, you know, and everything. Yeah. We have to continue to rewrite 
our story, right? We have to continue to train ourselves to look at our circumstances differently Mm -hmm. if we want a different outcome. So just like with you said about your time frame, we often think we need more time. You don't need more time. You have 24 hours in a day. It's how you prioritize your time is how you get things done. Mm-hmm. And so when I start to do something, I'm like, oh, I'm so busy. I don't have time for that. If I flip it and I say, that's not a priority right now, sometimes that's comfortable. Sometimes that's not. Mm-hmm. So I encourage people start playing those games with yourself to check yourself. Also going back to um, things that we can do to help us get out of those funk is to choose to look for the positive. I always like, we start our day or we end our day in my team with a win. And all of our meetings that we have, we always start with a win. Mm -hmm. I don't care if your coffee is strong or you didn't throw your MacBook. Like if Mm. if that's what would happen today, we are celebrating that win. Mm. But when we start to, because I mean, negative to negativity Mm -hmm. loves company, right? When we start getting over there, then the world's on fire and it's much harder to dig ourselves out of that hole. So if we can either start a gratitude practice, that's part of my daily um, every morning is write down three things that I'm grateful for and be specific. Because when we start to choose to look for those positive nuggets throughout the day, then they start to come up more frequently, right? So if if you're like, that's where I start to go. I start to play those games with myself on where I'm stuck and where I can get myself out of. Now you, I, I can imagine like with the amount of energy that you have and like the drive and stuff, uh, and and I struggle with this too. So I'm curious to hear like your take on it. But sometimes it's like I can feel like I'm ready to like take the next hill, and I start up the hill only to look around and like wonder like, you know, I left everyone back way in the distance, you know, and it's like I need to slow down a little bit or cast the vision a little bit more with the, with the, whatever it is, the goals of the company or what we're trying to do or why we're offering this new service or this or that. Right. And it's easy. Like, I know you've been down the, like you've been really into go high level lately. Right. And so you could just like, you could just come up and show to the team, like, Hey, we're, I just sold this. We're building it. Like, let's go. But like, that can also be for some team members, like, a little jarring or like, they're like, why do we, I like, we were just kind of getting this other thing down. Why do we have to do this thing? And so talk a little bit about that. Cause I'm sure I'm not the only one that like struggles with it. Oh my gosh. Once again, were you here? (laughs) Because when I had already processed that we were breaking up with active campaign and all the 25 different software that we're using, I had already processed that come MapCon and be able to talk to them, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I, forget which one I pulled aside, but I said, I just need to word vomit. And I just need to tell me that it's going to be okay. And then I'm all in, you have a new customer. (laughs) And so once I went through that, you're right, I was already there. So when I came back, I was on fire. And hindsight, I would have done it differently. And I'll tell you what I would done and what we're doing now better. But I did, I rolled back in and I said, we're on, we're doing it. And we had talked a little bit about before, but, but they weren't where I was already committed. So it has been a little bit messy because I'm learning it. Thankfully, my project manager has experienced. My developer is amazing and all already with me on this, but it's taken us a little time. Now, because once again, new year, my whole plan, my whole theme is relentless, is that I had to do, I have to do things differently when I lead my my team. And you're right. When I introduce something, even though I am 100% in and I have all these great ideas and I'm ready to go and I am thankful that I've surrounded myself with finishers, I cannot lead like that. I'm going to cause them to burn out. So what we've instilled is that Jen is going to be way more transparent with the goals for the company. And depending on at what level that they're at, they have more detail. But I started with my operations team And because usually they know like where I'm trying to go with the company, but not as much as they are now. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I created that doc. I put in, here's my goals and I broke it down by department. I then asked each of the team member or each of our, our departments to come up with their goals and three KPIs that they are going to track this year. Mm. And so I have their buy-in and they see the big goals that I'm going after my ops manager she point blank said, so what are we doing differently? Oh, and I'm like, this is what we're going to do differently. And I was able to map out. I know 
don't, once again, I'm challenging you. Like I challenged my, don't get hung up on the how, mm -hmm. because I haven't leveled up enough yet to handle that. So mm -hmm. I only can take the next step forward and the next step forward, I map that out. Um, and I mapped out the numbers and what I knew right now, what we needed to do to reach those goals. Um, and then from there being transparent at the very bottom of the list says Jen's wish list. And so if it doesn't go on or a part of any of those goals for the year, then it gets down here and I have to, we have to complete something above before mm -hmm. we move forward. That's great. So That's great. There's, and it's what, not even the end of the first month and there's like five things on it, but that, that's I think that's how I had to be. Though. I think that's a great practice that you, that you said, because I struggle with that too. Like we'll set even like quarterly goals or whatever mm -hmm. for the year, you know, like we have the year goals and we have a quarterly thing that we're trying to achieve. And we get like three or four or five weeks into the quarter. And I'm like, Oh, but we also need to do this other thing. Right. And it's in like, I just want to like keep adding on to the list, but obviously we've already used up a month and we've got these other things we're trying to do. And so like, I, I like the idea of a wish list just in terms of like, Hey, we'll get to this eventually if it's still important come another few months from now or a year from now, whenever, like we'll get to this, but like, I don't need to add another thing onto the team. Yep. I think that's great. I think that's great. The more that you give ownership to the team, the more they get excited about it and the more stuff gets done. Hmm. Like I always go back to the quicker I can get tasks and ideas and SOPs off my desk and into the team, the better it's be because I get out of the way. They have my blessings to run with it and it's not done by me. Mm. So it's glorious. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And and what do you say to the team member? Like, I, I don't know if you've had this, um, but sometimes like when I'm charting the like, Hey, we're going to conquer this next hill or this mountain or whatever, you know, someone on the team, which I appreciate like the honesty and the candor, right. That they can like even say this, but they're like, it's almost like the, well, John, when are we going to like, just be happy with where we're at and like, not, you know, like, like, are we ever going to get to a mountain and say, Hey, we've got a high enough view. We don't need to like take the next hill, you know, or whatever. Um, and I, that's not my personality. So I like, I have, I get, but I have to recognize that that is a feeling of like, Oh, this just is going to mean more clients or more work or, or this or that. Right. And like, they kind of just like things that the way they are. So like, what do you say in that situation? They didn't read my culture statement. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, I, I think it goes back to sharing the why, mm -hmm. right? As a leader, we have to cast that vision. And if those projects or goals align with the vision, the ultimate goal that we set out to do, then that's the way, way we go, right? And I can explain why. Why we can do this? Because I want to pay you more. I want to grow our team. I want mm -hmm. to give back. So I'm, I, I try to be very crystal, crystal clear on the why. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. Like that happens. And, but I just, I can't be comfortable for like, I'm okay with being content with the growth that I've seen, but I can't settle here mm -hmm. because I feel like we're made for more. Mm-hmm. So, and maybe even content, maybe it's like you can celebrate, right? You can celebrate where you are, right? And you can celebrate what we've done, but right. it's, it, but you're not going to just like settle for it, right? No, yeah. no, because I just, I just believe we're made for more and we have our company is made for more. Mm -hmm. And because our industry is constantly evolving, I mean, look where AI is, look at where yeah. we were talking about WordPress and where it's going. We've got to be willing to evolve. We've got to be willing to step outside of our comfort zone and stretch a little bit mm -hmm. for the greater good of the company. Because the more I can pour into this company, the more that trickles down to the team members. Mm -hmm. And it does come back to that culture statement. <laughs> it yeah, does come yeah. back that them buying in, but you know, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, Jen, um, I, you, I just, I love hanging out with you. We could, we could talk for a long time. Any closing thoughts or, or anything that you want to leave uh, our listeners and, and viewers with uh, before we sign off here, just as they're thinking about, I mean, we're at the beginning of the year, right? It's like, we've got the whole, the whole year ahead. We can kind of like chart our course, like anything that you would just kind of say is there, you know, maybe feeling like, oh, I've already lost a month, you know, trying to set my goals and, you know, or I already set goals in January and I've already haven't hit my, my weight loss plan or my fitness plan. I've already fell off the train. Like, what would you, well, how would you, what would you say? 
The goal isn't the end result. That's not the ending. So I would challenge everyone that now is the time. If you've already set those goals, it's okay to revisit them and to see what serves you now and where you want to go. And while you're looking over those, I want to challenge you to stretch them, 10X them, not just play it safe. Because when we continue to play safe, we're probably going to continue to get the same kind of outcome. So to go beyond that, look at you as a whole person and really write out and get laser focused on how you want to show up, what you want from your company and what you want to give. And it has to be more than financials. Mm -hmm. That's good. Really good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jen Sikowski, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Johnny, thank you so much for having me back on. I, it's always a pleasure and I feel privileged to be here. So thank you. Thanks for listening to the Agency Hour podcast and a huge thanks to Jen for joining us. I'm always so inspired getting to hang out with Jen and I know you were too. If you're feeling overwhelmed and need support in your agency, E2M is an amazing company offering white label services to agency owners so that you can lighten your load, serve more clients, and grow your business. Definitely encourage you to check them out. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe and please share this with anyone who you think may need to hear it. I'm Johnny Flash. Let's get to work.